Yeah, hi. Yes, you are. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I am speaking right now. Hello. No, there is no headphone. Nothing is turned on. No headphone is connected. Yes, sure. Hello. I'm fine, right? Now is it fine? Yeah, is it fine now? Hello? Yeah, is it fine now? Okay. But my Wi Fi connection is perfect. It is showing me the full connection and all. Now is it fine? Okay then. Uh, is it fine now, Avnish? Okay, okay. Up here, hang out, pe being karoge, right? Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on capital gains and advanced taxes resulting from the capital gains. My name is C.A. Shoykot Roy and I have been part of CLEAR for last uh, five years almost and uh, today we will be walking through the understanding of capital gains, the tax implication of various classes of capital assets. Uh, we are going to understand what constitutes a long-term capital asset, short-term capital asset. And uh, hopefully, after this session, uh, we will be in a better position to understand the implications of capital gains and the tax liability that is arising from those capital gains. We are going to take a look at the tax-saving opportunities as well on uh, capital gains. 
right and finally how we are going to uh, clear out our advance uh, tax liabilities if any along with what are the what is the importance of paying advance taxes uh, my name is ca shoykotra as i have said and uh, i have experience in international taxation and uh, Hello. Uh, I do hope now it is uh, visible. If not, uh, I'll just wait for a second. Right. If everything is, you can simply go ahead and start the session again. All right. So uh, now having understood the agenda of this webinar, uh, let's go to the topic by topic sections. Right. Now, as we have said, we are going to understand in detail what is capital asset, what constitutes a transfer of a capital asset, what is short-term capital gains, what is long-term capital gains. Uh, we are going to take a look at tax saving opportunity, tax compliances, and finally, the payment of advanced taxes. Uh, now, uh, along with that, we are just going to go through certain uh, important aspects uh, which may be needed at later point of time. That is the document for income tax return filing. Right. So, firstly, we are going to need all the necessary documents, basic necessary documents like Form 1626AS, AIS, and specifically, if we are reporting capital gains, the capital gains statement. Right. So, you can have capital gains arising from sale of shares or mutual fund units. In that case, you may require tax PNL statement or capital gains report. Uh, all the brokers have different different name for their reports, which can be used for tax return filing purposes. So that document will absolutely be necessary. And if you are filing the income tax return with capital gains or capital losses for last two, three, four years, in that case, uh, we also need to have the copies of last couple of years income tax returns, wherein you will be able to carry forward the loss of those years. Now, how and why this will be required, we will understand at a later point of this webinar. <coughs> now, 
firstly and let's try to understand what is a capital asset while talking about capital gains firstly we need to determine what constitutes a capital asset right so capital asset means any property of any kind held by a person now if we go by this definition the ambit of capital gains becomes very very huge right so it can constitute your personal items like clothing it can uh, it can come to some tangible asset intangible asset it can come to certain financial asset as well like shares or mutual fund or debentures uh, your jewelry maybe cars etc etc however for the purpose of income taxes the ambit of capital gains or capital asset has been uh, specified right it has been defined very clearly right so in terms of capital gains that uh, in terms of capital gains or capital asset in the eyes of income tax uh, any asset which are used for personal purposes right those are completely excluded from the list of capital asset for example if we are talking about a car car is used for your own personal uh, movement right you go, you are going from office to home home to office etc etc same goes for your bike as well now those items even though they are asset for you they are not considered to be asset in the eyes of income tax act therefore if you are selling off your car or motorbike in that case uh, any gains that is arising from it will not be considered for capital gains similarly if you are selling off motorbike or car etc at a loss that loss can also not be set off against eligible assets capital gains however there are certain specific inclusion is there in terms of capital asset for example jewelry right jewelry may be used for personal use definitely but any gains or losses you are making from sale of jewelry that can also come under the ambit of capital gains or losses in a work of art maybe maybe you have a painting of of a very famous painter like raja ravi varma right so any painting that you are selling off and getting a gains that can fall under the ambit of capital asset <coughs> now having hopefully we have understood what constitutes a capital asset now let's try to understand what is the transfer of a capital asset because incidence of capital gains taxes arise when transfer of capital asset takes place now the transfer in this context means that if you are selling it off for money if you are exchanging it for another asset or if you are relinquishing an asset relinquishing means in this context is the asset ceases to exist right for example you have some machinery maybe you are uh, you have a factory right and in that factory somehow some to some how due to some unforeseen unfortunate event uh, fire has broken out and due to that certain machinery has uh, has been machinery has been extinguished right they have been completely destroyed now this will also constitute a relinquishment of an asset right and you are going to get some uh, insurance premium sorry insurance recovery and that insurance recovery can come under the ambit of capital gains taxes right furthermore extinguishing right of an asset right if your right from an asset gets extinguished in that case we uh, we will also consider transfer of capital gains has happened now how does this extinguishment of right happens for example you hold shares of a particular company now the company is going for liquidation right now the company ceases to exist therefore you lose out on the right of getting the profit of the Uh, uh dividend of the company right so it will naturally extinguish the right on receiving some dividend or shares a dividend or money whatever it may be. 
that falls under the ambit of extinguishment of right. Furthermore, if you have some bonds, if you are redeeming it at its maturity, that will also consider to be transfer of capital asset and consequently capital gains tax will be levied upon it and it may be long term capital gains, it may be short term capital gains depending on the period of holding. Now, at this point of time, we are going to have a discussion on holding period of an asset. A holding period of an asset is vitally important because depending on the holding period and the nature of asset, we shall determine whether the capital gain is long term capital gain or short term capital gain. Now, why there is a need to determine uh, what is long term capital gain and short term capital gain? Because the rate of taxes and the treatment of taxes is widely different for short term asset and short uh, long term asset. Right? So if you have short term capital gains, it may have a different implication than if you have a long term capital gains. So it is very, very important. <coughs> now, normally, if an asset is held for a period not more than 36 months, right? If an asset is held for a period not more than 36 months, it is treated as short term capital asset, right? It should be held a period up to 36 months to be considered to be a short, short term asset. However, there are certain classes of asset for which a shorter duration has been mentioned. For example, listed equity shares or equity oriented mutual funds. Now, listed equity shares, if you are holding them for a period up to 12 months, then only it is considered to be a short term capital asset. If you are holding uh, listed equity share for a period in excess of tw uh, 12 months, in that case, it will become a long term asset. Now, equity oriented mutual fund are largely the mutual fund which consists of listed equity shares, right? They have a majority holding in listed equity shares. Therefore, the character of liquid uh, listed equity share gets translated to equity oriented mutual fund. Therefore, if equity mutual funds are held for a period up to 12 months, it will be considered to be a <coughs> short term capital gains. If they are held for a period in excess of 12 months, they will be considered to be a long term asset. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, another special case is present that is in case of unlisted equity shares or immovable property. Now, if you have unlisted equity shares, right? It can be shares of a private limited organization, private limited company. It can be a share listed outside India, right? Or uh, in, the, in these two cases, the shares are considered to be a unlisted equity shares. Now, the question may arise that the shares which are listed outside India, why they are not considered to be a uh, listed shares? They are by giving me a shorter duration, shorter duration of holding period. Now, in the act, it is the de, uh, the defining the defining characteristic of a listed equity share is it should be listed in any of the recognized stock exchange in India. Since foreign shares are listed outside India, they are not considered to be recognized in India. Therefore, therefore, any shares which are listed outside India, maybe NYSC or any other stock uh, stock market outside India, they are not considered to be a listed equity in India. Now, second category for this special case are immovable property. Now, immovable property normally means a house or a land, etc., etc. So, if these two types of asset are held for a period up to 24 months, then it is considered to be a short term capital asset. Now, normally the short term capital gains are taxed based on the marginal slab rates. Right? So, 
if we are going with the old tax regime, then 5%, then 20%, then 30%, those are the slab rates. So whatever the capital gains are there, they will be taxed on the basis of that. However, there is again a special case assigned to listed equity and equity oriented mutual fund for which the rate of tax is 15%. So if you are selling off equity oriented mutual fund or listed equity shares in India, in that case, the rate of tax will be 15%. <coughs> now, Having understood, I hope we are clear about the short term capital gains. Now we are going to talk about what is a long term capital asset. Now, normally speaking, any asset which are not short term asset are considered to be a long term asset. Right? So, as we have discussed, uh, there are few classes of asset there are few classes of asset which has a, a very specific short term uh, holding period right for example equity oriented mutual fund or equity share itself so if those assets are held for a period in excess of 12 months they will become a long term capital asset and any gains arising from transfer of that will consider to be a long term capital gains however the rate of tax for this long term capital asset that is listed equity or equity oriented mutual fund are vastly different than the short term. Right? So in case we are selling off listed equity shares or listed uh, equity oriented mutual fund, in that case, after giving you a deduction of 1 lakh rupees, the remaining gains are taxed at the rate of 10%. Alright? So let's assume you have a long term capital gains on sale of shares of India listed entity, right? And you have a gain of let's say 3 lakh rupees. Now, out of that 3 lakh rupees, firstly, a 1 lakh rupees of deduction will be allowed, right? And on the remaining amount, 10% tax rate will be charged. So, effectively, your gains taxable gains becomes 20 uh, sorry 2 lakhs and 10% is the rate so your tax rate will uh, tax will become 20000 rupees now this will obviously be included by surcharge or cess if uh, cess is applicable for you right so this will be the special case for listed equity and equity or mutual fund now <coughs> In general terms, long term capital gains has a rate of tax of 20% that too after giving you an indexation benefit, right? However, it, the point to be noted here, listed equity and equity oriented mutual fund do not enjoy the benefit of indexation. The rate of tax on them are flat 10%. Now, any other, uh, any other fund any other asset they enjoy a rate of tax of 20 percent with indexation however listed security which are not equity or equity oriented mutual fund they enjoy a special provision still that is they enjoy a rate of tax 20 percent with indexation benefit and or rather or 10 percent without indexation benefit Whichever is beneficial for the assessee, the holder of the asset, can choose that particular uh, scheme of taxation. Now, here lies a question. Here lies a question, what is indexation? Now, indexation in this context means, indexation in this context means, is to uplift the cost of yesteryears, right? So, if we look at the picture very rationally we can see maybe an asset was purchased in the year 2010 right right now we are in the year 2023 so 13 years have passed now in this 13 years uh, the fluctuation of cost has happened right 
there is a tremendous inflation and for that prices of every asset has gone up year by year similarly if we try to equate the purchase price of 2010 with purchase price of 2023 we will be in a very unjust position now this position has been recognized by the income tax department themselves therefore <coughs> excuse me therefore every year they issue indexation points so that we can bring the cost to today's standard now for last few years indexation the base indexation year is of 2001 and 2 and index point assigned for that financial year is 100 and financial year 22 23 the index point was 331 and for financial year 23 24 the index point is 348 right so if you have purchased any asset in financial year 2001 and 2 by paying uh 10 lakh rupees right now you are selling it off the purchase price of that asset would be 34 lakh 80000 that is by using the index points we can uplift the cost of that year to today's standard now i hope we are very much clear on Uh, holding period of the capital asset how the rate of tax works out uh, what documents may be needed for filing uh, filing the income tax return etc etc now we are going to talk about the tax saving opportunity on capital gains now tax saving opportunity is only available in in case of long term capital gains right in case you have long term capital gains then only you can go for tax saving opportunity if you have short term capital gains uh regretfully it needs to be said that there is no tax saving opportunity apart from the normal tax saving opportunities right like atc atd etc etc that too if you have used them out for your salary income on etc they will not be available for you <coughs> excuse me however there are few specific asset if you are getting capital gains out of the tax saving opportunity might play out wonderfully for you now <coughs> excuse me under section 54 tax saving opportunity is there now in this case if you are selling of a house property and if you are investing the gain amount in purchase or construction of a different house property in that case the gains in your hand will be completely exempted provided you are putting the entire gain amount in purchase or construction of the property <coughs> excuse me now the in case you are selling of any other long term asset and investing the sum into a purchase of new house flat or construct a flat or house you can get the exemption however in contrast to section 54 you need to invest the entire sale proceeds to get the exemption of the gain on its entirety correct right? so let's uh, try to understand how this plays out under section 54f let's assume you have some foreign shares right you are selling it off and you are getting a sale consideration of let's say 30 lakh rupees now out of that 30 lakh rupees of gain sorry sale proceeds your capital gains is coming to let's say 15 lakh rupees now if you are using the 30 lakh rupees of sale proceeds into purchase of a flat in that case the entire capital gain of 15 lakh will be exempted in your hand however if you are investing a fraction of it let's say out of 30 lakh rupees you are investing only 20 lakh rupees in purchase of a new flat in that case 10 lakh rupees of capital gains will be taxed uh, will be exempted in your hand remaining 5 lakh rupees they will be taxed in your hand at the rate of 20% further this 
uh, will be increased. The tax amount will be increased by the education says or surcharge, if any. Now let's talk about section 54 EC. Now 54 EC is again targeted towards the property sellers, right? Now there is a possibility, there is a chance that you have a house property, you are selling off that house property, but you don't want to invest in a in another house property. Maybe you have some plans, maybe you have plans to go outside India. In that case, purchasing a house property does not make any sense. So how to do, what to do with this capital case? In this case, section 54 EC comes into picture. Now section 54 EC tells if you are selling off a house property and you are investing the amount in uh, specific bonds, the gain amount in specific bonds, in that case, the gain amount can be exempted provided the gain amount is not exceeding 50 lakh rupees right now you need to invest in certain specific bonds right the bonds should bear the initial section 54 ec bonds and there are couple of bonds available for it for example uh, rural electrification bond rcl bonds national highway authority of india bonds power finance corporation bonds pfc bonds and railway finance corporation irfc bonds so these four bonds are notified right now <coughs> which can give you section 54 ec benefit right so if you are investing in these bonds then your gains will be exempted however the point to be noted is you need to stay invested in these bonds for a period of five years right if you are breaking out the lock-in period of five years in that case the entire gain amount will be entire gain amount will be taxed in your hand furthermore these bonds will give you certain interest that interest amount will be taxable in your hand as interest income furthermore if you have a possibility that you will not be able to make the investment within time right so section 54 ec gives you a time limit of six months from the date of transfer if you are uh, looking at the fact that it will not be possible for you to invest the amount in 54 ac bonds for a period within a period of six months in that case you can deposit the amount in capital gain savings scheme account and whenever the bond is available whenever the bonds are available you can start investing in these bonds withdrawing the money from capital gain savings scheme right so you can plan accordingly how you are going to save the taxes right now capital gains in case of houses in case of sale of houses now we are going to take a scenario wherein we are going to see how the capital gains will play out in case of sale of house right now Now, if, <coughs> if the house is held for a period in excess of 24 months, it will be long-term capital asset. Now, since these are long-term capital asset, indexation benefit will be applicable on the gains calculation. All right? And similar to the earlier discussion, indexation benefit, the cost upliftment will happen. <laughs> In case you have done any improvement on the asset itself, in that case, uh, you can include the cost of improvement as cost of uh, acquisition as well. Right? It will be uh, the improvement cost. Obviously, cost of improvement should be carried out to increase the life of the property. Right. So, if you are doing some small repair here and there, maybe some paint patch patchwork, right? or some bulb has gone out and you are affixing a new bulb those are not considered to be increasing the life of the property right maybe the roofing has completely gave in 
you are doing the roofing all over again right or uh, the flooring has completely done done for you are doing the flooring again so those expenses are considered to be are considered to be the increasing the life of an asset right also any selling expenses that you incur say for example you may have appointed a broker who is brokering the deal in that case that selling expenses can also be deducted to arrive at actual capital gains and finally section 54 or 54 ec benefit can be taken to save up on the long term capital gains now a situation may arise in case of sale of shares right now again as we have discussed liquidity listed equity shares are mutual fund uh, if they are held for a period in excess of 12 months the rate of tax is 10% after giving you a deduction of 1 lakh rupees on the gain amount right and they do not enjoy any benefit of indexation right so in case you are getting you are selling some listed shares which are listed in nsc you can simply reduce the cost of acquisition from the selling price and you will be arriving at the gain amount furthermore any selling expenses related to the transfer of the asset say for example the commission or the stamp duty etc etc can be deducted however security transaction tax or stt cannot be deducted while coming to the capital gains amount now section 54f benefit can be taken to save the capital gains taxes right section 54f says that if you are selling off any capital asset which are not uh, any immovable property that is land or building or both and if you are making the investment uh, of making the investment out of the sell proceeds then proportional capital gains will be exempted in your hand <coughs> i hope we all can recollect the example we have discussed earlier that sell proceeds is coming to 30 lakh rupees the gain is coming to 50 lakh rupees now if i want to exempt the entire 50 lakh rupees of capital gains then i need to be investing the entire 30 lakh rupees and if i am investing uh, only 20 lakh rupees then proportional capital gains that is 10 lakh rupees will be taxed uh, will be exempted in my hand the remaining 5 lakh rupees of capital gains will be taxable in the hands of the assessor now hopefully we all understood the implication of long term and short term capital asset now let's try to understand the advance tax implication now if you have some some amount of tax taxable gain in your hand then only advance tax implication comes into picture now as per the law if advance tax if after taking deduction of all the tds and ftcs if the tax liability is in excess of 10000 rupees then the person need to pay advance taxes right failure to do so failure to pay advance taxes will result in penalty under two different sections interest under two different sections right normally advance tax need to be paid in quarter wise manner on 15th of june 15th of september december and march during the financial year in question in which the transaction are taking place furthermore uh, 15% 45% 75% and 100% of the total tax due need to be paid within those due dates if you are not paying advance taxes that would result in interest under two different sections that is 234b e and 234c the rate of interest will be 1% per month under two different acts so if you are not making the payment of advance taxes this interest liability will be waiting for you now we are at the end of our session uh, if we have any question then we can simply just go ahead and address that
uh, yes ancestral property sale money you can get in your normal savings bank account there is no problem however uh, however however you need to be investing the gain into purchase of another property so that the capital gains can be exempted in your hand Section 54F is applicable if you have long term capital gains from unlisted equity funds. Yes, definitely. Definitely, if you have unlisted equity shares, you can take the advantage of Section 54F. But the entire gain amount, need, uh, sorry, entire sale proceeds need to be invested in a property to get the entire gain amount exempted. Okay, uh, specific action need to be taken care of for wasted and unwasted option, right? Now, unwasted shares, if you are only talking about wasted shares, uh, wasted and unwasted, uh, firstly, if they are unwasted, that means you don't have the ownership right of those options. Therefore, any, any consequence of capital gains does not arise there. Secondly, at the time of wasting of the shares, capital gains tax implication does not arise because the wasted shares are given to you by your company as a perquisite. Right? Since they are given to you as perquisite, they are treated at par with the salary. And just like salary, the amount of tax deducted are within the Vested options. That means, if the company is given giving you 100 options and your tax rate is coming to let's say 30 percent, in that case, company is going to withhold 30 shares, 30 vested shares from your side, release 70 shares, and remaining 30 shares will be recovered from you as taxes. So at that point of time, incidence of capital gains does not arise. The incidence of capital gains will be arising when you, on your own, will be selling those 70 shares which are wasted. Okay, uh, so I believe we are talking about uh, ancestral property. So section 54 will be applicable in this case. Right. So section 54 tells you in case you are uh, buying a property then the purchase needs to happen within a period of two years in, in case you are constructing a property then the construction need to happen within a period of three years We do have another couple of minutes in our hand, in our uh, in our hand. So we can simply go ahead and ask the questions if you have any.
right uh so advanced tax no i don't believe you need to go for advanced taxes if you are planning to purchase a house within a period of 2 years you can simply go ahead and uh, take the deduction there is no need for you to pay advanced taxes or any taxes however if you are unable to purchase the flat within a period of 2 years in that case on expiry of 2 years you need to be paying the taxes on the gain amount right uh any option to offset capital gains from vested rsus now again vested rsu does not give rise to capital gains right only when the rsus are sold off in the open market then only the incidence of capital gains takes place right as of now vested rsu means you are holding on to rsus as simple as that they need to be disclosed in your income tax return without any doubt definitely they has to be shown definitely a lot of disclosure is needed but there is no incidence of capital gains only when you are selling them off at that point of time it needs to be shown however if you choose you can always choose to disclose sell to cover uh, transaction in your income tax return right but <coughs> that will be having very minimal effect of tax position uh, section 54f sold shares of 50 lakhs right so if you have 50 lakh rupees of sell and 40 lakhs is the gain amount in that case you need to be investing uh, the entire 50 lakh rupees in purchase of a flat right then only the 40 lakh rupees gain will be exempted in your hand now if you are investing 25 lakh rupees in that case 20 lakh rupees will be exempted in your hand and remaining 20 lakh rupees will be taxable in your hand no if you are not doing anything with that money right or you don't have any intention of purchasing the property in 2 years time or 3 years time in that case you should be paying the taxes immediately right the option is given to you only if you are going to purchase a property if you have no intention of going to purchase a property you should be paying the tax immediately yes uh, if you are planning to take up a home loan right if you are planning to take up a home loan in that case also you can claim the benefit of section 54f right we still have couple of minutes in our hand if you have any question please let us know yes in this case you need to be you can take advantage of section 54f right uh using the sale proceeds you can purchase a flat or you can construct a house and the gain amount will be exempted in that case if you are investing the property uh, investing in the property to its full selling consideration extent
Right, we are almost at the end of our session. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining with us. Hopefully, you have learned something out of this webinar, and uh, hopefully, you will be able to plan your capital gains, the plan tax planning in that uh, in this in this uh, webinar app by applying whatever knowledge is shared to you in this webinar. Uh, thank you all for joining with us. You have